If you're looking for the most amazing place to stay in 2025 for a month or even long term, which one is better, Bali or Da Nang? Based on my experience the past three years living as a digital nomad, these are my two favorite destinations ever. And in this video I will compare all the important aspects like cost of living, lifestyle, people and community, working, food and even dating. So in the end you will know exactly which one is better for you. So let's start with the visas. Basically, if you're going to Da Nang, Vietnam has very easy visa system. So most countries get like 30 to 45 days visa exemption. So you can just go and don't worry about visas at all. If you're staying longer than that, the only option basically is the e-visa that is up to 90 days. So up to three months, you can stay super easily. But if you want to stay more long term, then you basically need to do visa runs and it's little hassle like that. And in Bali for up to two months, you can also easily stay with e-visa. It costs little bit of money but it's quite affordable and easy process to get and if you want to stay more longer term there's a lot of visa options but they're a little bit more costly you can work with visa agent for example i have two years visa that cost me around 650 dollars so basically for long term bali has better visa options but vietnam is very easy for short term and what about cost of living and accommodation in these places definitely vietnam and da nang is so much cheaper than bali so that's one of the most like biggest benefits benefits of Da Nang. I will talk about all the other aspects of course which are also important so it's not just about the cost but yeah Da Nang is so cheap and that's amazing about it. It's so easy to also find accommodation that is like super affordable but still like good design and comfortable and good location everything like that for like 400 to 600 dollars per month very easily and you can even find way cheaper places and these are like short-term prices so Da Nang is very easy and affordable. So that's really amazing like in Da Nang you can basically live like like really comfortable and nice lifestyle like it's really amazing for like one thousand dollars per month or even quite easily under five hundred dollars per month but in bali it's not that easy technically you can still live here under like six hundred dollars per month but it's not very easy and comfortable it's like way less nice lifestyle than it would be in danang with that money but in bali you can still live like really amazing lifestyle like accommodation like mine costs like a little over six hundred dollars and it's really comfortable and nice nothing really compared to the ones in danang with like proper apartment with my own kitchen and rooftop pool and all kind of stuff like that but still like it's pretty decent in bali still but a little bit more difficult to find nice accommodation with decent price but of course like the lifestyle in Bali is still very, very nice for like $1,500 to $2,000 per month. So comparing to Western countries, it's still really affordable and nice here. But Da Nang definitely is better in this category. And I would really recommend checking out my Southeast Asia Stays video guide if you come into Southeast Asia. Because it's going to make planning your trip so much more easier with the visas and accommodation, knowing exactly where to stay, what are the best areas. It includes 15 of the best destinations that I have shown in my channel and a lot of nomad life tips. But yeah, when it comes to the lifestyle i will talk later more about the community and people aspect of living in these two places but generally when it comes to the lifestyle of like how your daily life is looking they both can be very nice in a way that in danang you can live close to the beach and go to the beach all the time it's really beautiful beach you can chill there you can swim it's very very nice you can even surf there the waves are not always the best but it's still possible to do especially in the beginning of the year the waves are a little bit better but it's just like amazing beach and see the lifestyle combined. A nice thing about Da Nang is that in the beach area the traffic is not so bad like it's never really stuck or anything it's quite comfortable to drive around and there's a lot of nice restaurants and a lot of things to do close by. Comparing that to Bali where the traffic is a little bit of a problem especially in Django area where you probably want to stay which is the best for nomads but the benefit comparing to Da Nang is that in Django even if the beach is not as beautiful but it's still very nice for sunset time and also you can still swim here but the surfing is definitely better in Bali the waves are pretty much like really good for like almost any day of the year and also when it comes to a lot of activities like paddle it's way better in Bali of course there's so many clubs and so many people playing in Danang there's no paddle yet I think they're gonna build it soon but yeah so far way better in Bali and also like when it comes to all kind of activities like boxing or yoga or anything like that there's so many more options and better options in Bali and also gyms are definitely better in Bali there's like amazing amazing gyms 
gyms that have like ice bath and sauna and pool area, all kind of stuff like that. There's not really anything like that in Da Nang. There's one gym with ice bath and infrared sauna and uh, yeah, it's pretty decent, but not as nice as in Bali, but maybe a little bit cheaper in Vietnam. And when it comes to working on internet, basically Da Nang has really good internet, surprisingly good. There's some cafes and co-working spaces that has like very high speed internet. In Bali, it's a little bit lower, but it's still pretty decent. In Bali, I would say that it's generally maybe more stable and more like uh, in any place it's pretty decent. In Danang, there's some places that is not really good at all and some places that is extremely good. So it's a little bit more variety. And in Bali, the design nomad and like working remotely culture is way bigger, of course. Already have been many years. So there's a lot of co-working spaces with a lot of events and different areas to work and like different things. It's way bigger scene here. Comparing to Danang, where's only few co-working spaces that are a little bit smaller and not as nice and doesn't have so many features but it's still possible to work in co-working spaces and cafes and home in Danang but it's like just a little bit different and when it comes to networking and building a business in these places Bali is definitely way superior in that way also that there's just more professionals more business owners more people building businesses in Bali than in Danang it's also like a little bit growing scene in Danang but Bali is like way more so in that way if it's your priority to build a business and network with a lot of people Bali is still way better for that and one question I get so many times in my channel is about business setup and and paying taxes as a digital nomad and one great option for that is to set up a business in Hong Kong and it has never been easier than with Osom the sponsor of this video. Osom helps you incorporate remotely in this tax-friendly region without ever needing to step foot in an office. Leave the finance and admin, taxes, bookkeeping and accounting to their team of expert accountants and focus on growing your business. Osom software gives you everything you need in one place. Track your cash flow in real time, stay on top of invoices and manage your business finances with ease. Join over 15,000 small business owners who trust Osom. Click the first link in the description to get 16% off any Osom services. But now back to the video. And of course the people around you having a community and also dating is a big part of this lifestyle and enjoying your life in these destinations. So I would say generally Bali is quite superior in this way because there's just so many more like-minded digital nomads and very Western people living in Bali, especially in Changu, and especially when it comes to making friends with locals and dating locals, Bali is just so much better because the locals here most of the time speak pretty good English, like either really good English or just like decent at least. In Vietnam it's more like some rare occasions you meet people who speak decent English, but most of them in my experience in Dana, I don't really speak that much English. And also just the culture is not so strong about dating between foreigners and locals. In my experience, what I see in Da Nang and also like just, yeah, usually foreigners just hang around with each other. I mean, also in Django, but even more in Da Nang, doesn't seem like so much in the credit. Like, lo locals in Vietnam and Da Nang, they're so friendly and so nice, but it's just, I think the language barrier. And generally what I see in Bali, there's like way more people actually staying here, like every year for a few months and coming back all the time and actually staying a little bit longer, like six months. And a lot of people actually living here long-term, like never leaving, just being here for years already and just having a dog or a house or some stuff like that. I haven't really seen that in Danang. So if you are looking for a long-term place where you want to build like nice community and friend group and stuff like that, probably Bali is better option for that than Danang. Danang is more like there's a lot of people you can meet. You can definitely make a lot of friends there, but it's more like people coming for a month or two or three months, not really planning to like actually live there long-term. Maybe it can change in the future a little bit, especially if they come out with some kind of like digital nomad visa or long-term visa option. But so far, Bali is so much more like that. Than done on. And by the way, if you're getting value out of this video, you should probably like the video and subscribe to not miss out on the next videos. And also another important aspect of course, living and enjoying life in these places is the food. And I would say Bali is of course famous for like, there's so many restaurants like it's just endless in Django area you can just eat any cuisine there's new restaurants every week like the food scene is really amazing it's so good but what I would say that Danang when it comes to local food is so much better like at least for me in my opinion I 
think many people agree with this. Vietnamese food is just amazing because it's so fresh, it's quite healthy, it's very very affordable and so tasty, it's just so good. And of course while living this lifestyle we also want to experience sort of amazing things, not just have a nice routine, which both of these places are really good for the routine, but also experiencing new places, doing like day trips and weekend trips. I would say that Bali has infinite options when it comes to like you can do weekend trip to Uluwatu, you can go to Ubud, there's so many different areas in Bali that are amazing and there's so much to experience when it comes to the culture, like temples and everything, so many remote beaches, there's waterfalls and volcanoes, there's just so much in Bali and also like islands around Bali. There's just so many places you can go so easily from here and uh, yeah you can definitely like stay in Bali for like a year or two, like for me I've been here three and a half years and I still have an experience like all of it it's just like there's so much and Da Nang also has many things to do there you can go to Hoi An traditional Vietnamese town there's a lot to do there there's Bana Hills that is also like a great place it's really cool there's like amusement park there and like it's a cool place to go and visit is amazing and uh, some other stuff like temples and stuff like that around Da Nang so there's definitely like a lot to do there too but it's just like way less than in Bali. I would say in Da Nang, most of the things you can do there you can experience within like a few weeks or one month. And if you are interested in partying and nightlife, Bali definitely has bigger scene for that. Like there's big, big beach clubs and like uh, big nightclubs and a lot of parties. So like there's just so much in Bali all the time. And in Da Nang, there's just not much there. Like there's some nightclubs, but people people say that it's just like pretty empty and they're just trying to sell you stuff so it's not really like doesn't have the culture and scene so much. I also wanted to mention about the weather because if you're staying for long term it's quite different in Bali and Da Nang. Bali is definitely more tropical climate. Da Nang in the beginning of the year it's actually not so hot which is pretty nice if you're staying Southeast Asia to get a little escape from the heat and the humidity. So which one is better for nomads? What I would say is that it really depends like what do you want to experience and how long you're gonna stay. For long term Bali is still better in my opinion but Da Nang can be more affordable and easy and simple for some situations works better and I know some people don't like Bali the vibe so much because it's so busy with the traffic and there's so many foreigners and like yeah there's some problems in Bali that it's not also so clean always and like little things like some people do mind about those things more than others so hopefully this video give you a little idea which one is better for you but yeah if you can definitely try both places for a month at least and see which one you like better. 